Joining me now for more on this topic, Rabbi Shmuley Boteak, founder of World Values Network and also the author of Holocaust Holiday, among others. So, Rabbi, uh, you've been pretty clear on your thoughts about President Trump. You call him a staunch uh, friend and ally of Israel. What do you want to see from the Biden administration? Well, the Biden administration and President Biden in particular did a very good job in emphasizing emphatically that Israel has the right to defend itself against terror missiles and rockets from Hamas, which is which is a bloodthirsty dead cult, a death cult, which engages in honor killings against Palestinian women. They have a genocidal charter calling for the annihilation of Jews wherever they live, including here in New York or in Los Angeles, anywhere in the United States. And I so we're grateful for that, but there has not been sufficient condemnation of Hamas as a terrorist organization. And with Secretary of State Blinken in the Middle East, he can say all he wants, that there are things that can be done to create peace. But until Israel is given the wherewithal to defeat Hamas militarily, there won't be peace because terrorists make it impossible to achieve any kind of peace. How could the United States coexist with ISIS? It cannot. The United States cannot coexist with Al-Qaeda. The United States destroyed Al-Qaeda. The United States destroyed the Taliban. To the extent that it didn't fully defeat the Taliban, that's why there's still a war in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. The same is true of Israel and Hamas. We need the United States to fully condemn Hamas. All right, we'll talk more about that in just a minute, but I do want to touch on this uh, tweet from Sasha Baron Cohen cracking down on Twitter. Rabbi, what does it say to you when you hear people or see people tweeting Hitler was right? Well, think about that for a moment. People in the year 2021 are tweeting that the greatest monster that ever lived, who killed 10,000 Jews a day for four years, that's three 9-11s a day for four years. We're, all, we're about to come to the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Look what the United States did. 20 years later, we're still at war. The Jews endured three 9-11s a day for four years. Hitler did it, and in the year 2021, people are saying Hitler was right. What, to gas me? God forbid? My family, God forbid? Are these people sick? These people are sick. They're disgusting. They're vile. They're grotesque. I'm sorry not to wax more eloquently about them, but um, as a Jew, this is an abomination. And how is Twitter allowing this? They pulled President Trump off of Twitter, but they're allowing Hitler is right as a hashtag. I mean, we've reached such insanity and inanity, it beggars belief. All right, so let's get to the New York Times ad. You took out a full page ad, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, Rabbi, but you seem to be saying here, instead of criticizing Israel, people should be condemning Hamas. No, Israel's a democracy, and you can criticize Israel. That's the difference between Gaza under Hamas's rule and Jerusalem or Tel Aviv. People criticize Israel all the time. People in Israel condemn, criticize Netanyahu all the time. You know what Netanyahu can do? Nothing. Try to criticize Hamas from within Gaza City. You will be decapitated, tortured, you will be imprisoned, etc. There is legitimate criticism of democracy and there is demonization of the people. What Dua Lipa, who we uh, confirm their condemnations are not criticism, they are demonization. Dua Lipa wrote that Israeli IDF soldiers wear t-shirts bragging about shooting pregnant Palestinian women. That's not criticism, that's demonization. Not only is it false, of course, it's disgusting, it's demonization. Let's, uh, it, let's it, show it, you her response to that, if we can, Rabbi, quickly. She wrote on her Instagram page, I take this stance because I believe that everyone, Jews, Muslims, and Christians, have the right to live in peace as equal citizens of a state they choose. Is it possible to do that as they contend without being considered anti-Semitic? Um, Dua Lipa, can criticize the Jewish community and Israel all she wants. What she cannot do is lie about Israel being an apartheid state or engaging in ethnic cleansing, or saying that Israeli soldiers are actually like the SS or the Gestapo. That is, a, that is an abominable anti-Semitic slur, and it's what's leading in part, but it's leading to Jews being beaten up on the streets of New York and Los Angeles. Take Mark Ruffalo. He at least had the decency to admit that his disgusting lie, which he now admits was a lie, that Israel engaged in genocide, he wrote that last week, he now apologized and said that he didn't tell the truth. He said that he's coming forward to repudiate the lie because he sees Jews being brutalized on the streets of, of New York City or Los Angeles. He knows it's leading to a rise right. of anti-Semitism. So Dua Lipa and Bella Hadid can criticize all they want, but demonization is a totally different animal. Let's and 
we have a right as Jews to defend ourselves against defamation. Let's leave on this, Rabbi. We, we hear a lot about anti-Semitism. We've also seen attacks uh, recently on other groups, including Asian Americans. A year after George Floyd, we're surrounded by a lot of anger and a lot of hate. And as a man of God and someone I'm sure who's thought about this a lot, do you have a message for people about hate? Is there a way for us out of this cycle? Um, on the, on the, uh, for us in the Jewish community, a yard site, the anniversary of someone's death is actually very special. Um, George Floyd was murdered. Uh, it broke all of our hearts to see such a, such a thing happen in the United States and justice was done. I hope it'll continue to be done, of course. We want reconciliation. We want everyone to see that we're all equally God's children. But uh, with all due respect to my Palestinian brothers and sisters, that cannot coexist with a genocidal charter of an organization like Hamas that calls for a second Holocaust. Anyone who openly calls for genocide has crossed the, if, from any level of human decency into abominable hatred that is trying to incite mm. others to attack a community that experienced one genocide already 75 years ago. With all due respect to whoever's watching wants to be critical, one Holocaust was quite enough, wasn't it? I think Holocaust was, one Holocaust was quite enough. We don't need another one. And if we, if we are to have reconciliation, the first thing we need to do is to stop genocide. Never again means never again, not now, not with any kind of justification, not through anti-Semitism, not through bigotry, not through racism, never again. And that's how we will become united under God as equal God's children with infinite worth and infinite dignity. We'll leave it at that. Rabbi Shmuley Boteka. Boteak. My apologies for that at the end there. Oh, it's been a pleasure to be on. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Rabbi.